Hi everyone, this is Olivier and you're watching the IoT Show. Today I have Chris with me and Chris and I will talk about uh, device management, right? Chris? Exciting, yeah. Good to be here. You're excited? Definitely. Uh, thanks for, uh, for coming on the show. No problem. Um, so what we're going to talk about actually is not, is not what people would think about when we talk about device management, like, hey, I'm going to manage my assets and do firmware update, whatever. Mm -hmm. What we want to talk about is the primitives, what it takes to implement device management using the Azure IoT platform, right? Exactly. So in uh, Azure IoT, we often talk about a device management lifecycle which really entails a number of different phases of mm -hmm. managing a device. Okay. So that can begin with just planning. So organizing your devices based on topology, location, other factors. And then we talk about uh, registration, configuration, mm -hmm. monitoring, and, and ultimately retiring a device. Okay. And so to address those different phases in the device lifecycle, we've exposed a number of different primitives and services to kind of implement those types of scenarios. So I'll talk a few about a few of those today. Okay. So Chris, what are those primitives that uh, we have in the Azure IoT platform? Yeah, so we have a number of different primitives in the Hub platform. Let's start with device twins. Okay. Device twins are a JSON document that allow the synchronization of device configuration state between devices in the cloud. Okay. And it's backed up by a managed store in IoT Hub okay. so that developers can run queries and find information about their devices without okay. having to replicate all that data. Is it like, can I think of it as a digital twin or is it like this shadow thing, this something that represents the state of the device in the cloud? Exactly. Okay. So a device uh, twin boils down into reported and desired properties. Okay. So desired properties being how you want that device to be configured. It could be mm -hmm. settings, it could be software, firmware, however uh -huh. you see fit. Okay. Reported properties allow the device to synchronize and report data and state back into the cloud yep. so that you get a realistic picture of how that device is set up. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we have tags. And tags are really meant as a way to organize these devices okay. and, and however you see fit. So you could tag them by location, you could tag them by model, however you want to organize those devices. Okay. Uh, one thing in, about the tags actually, tags are seen only in the cloud side of things, right? The device itself, when it synchronizes the twin, doesn't see the tags. That's right. Tags okay. are really meant as a way to organize from the cloud rather than on the device. You got it. Okay, so twin is really like the state, like last known state of the device, last known desired or reported. Exactly. Uh, what, what are other primitives we have? So we also have something called a direct method, and yeah. a direct method is a way to have an interactive session with a device where you want to send an immediate command and then get an immediate response from the device back. Okay. So in the demo that I'm going to show today, uh, I'm going to issue a reboot command for the okay. device and then I'll see that the device was able to reboot successfully and respond back. How's that different from a, an, actual, uh, an actual message you would send to the device? Because you can actually, you have this notion of cloud to device message as mm -hmm. well. How are the methods different for that? So really they allow the device to send an immediate response back to the device. Okay. Uh, it does depend on the device being offline at the time, or online, online. at the time. So it's kind of an RPC. It's like, That's right. like yeah. boom, now you respond immediately. And on the back end, when I do the call, if you're not online, I have to wait for you to be online next time. To exactly. Send, to yep. issue okay, yep. cool. Um, and um, we'll talk about that a bit more, I guess, towards the end. But there's also this notion of, so you, you have this discrete way of controlling the configuration or sending methods um, to a specific device. Mm -hmm. But then if you want to do that at scale, right, you need to have tools in order to address all devices that are like, all the devices that are on floor number three of building 43. Exactly. Uh, so how do you do that with IoT? Yeah, so a couple of different uh, tools for that. Uh, one is starting with the query. So mm -hmm. a query allows you to uh, select a, a set of devices based on a number of different criteria. So our query language is uh, quite extensible mm -hmm. and allows you to filter based on things like reported properties uh -huh. or tags. Uh, you can also uh, use jobs, and jobs are meant as an, a long running operation okay. across a large scale of devices okay. to either issue uh, direct methods or to do twin updates. Okay. Let's see it let's in action. See it, let's see it in action. Okay, so I have a couple of uh, demos set up today. The first one that I wanted to run through 
was the direct method. Okay. So in this example, I have a, sam uh, a sample running where a simulated device is going to listen for a direct method. Okay. Uh, uh, and in this case, it's a reboot command. Once okay. it receives that command, it's going to reboot, simulate it, and then respond back okay. to uh, the cloud. Yeah, a typical scenario would be that you want to have like a device rebooted for X or Y reason, and you want to do that at scale. Exactly. You were saying like all the devices there, I want them to reboot. And, okay, yeah, it. and so yeah. this is being actually orchestrated by a job. Uh, okay. Obviously, this is simplified down to one device, but you could see running this across a large if scale. You can do one. You can do <laughs> many. <laughs> many, exactly. <laughs> So once I kick this off, you can see a couple of different uh, consoles here. The first being from the cloud side. So okay. on the cloud, it uh, kicked off the job, mm -hmm. issued the direct method, and then uh, was waiting for re response. Okay. On the device side, which we see over here, uh, the device was listening for that direct me uh -huh. method to be sent, uh, sees the command for a reboot, performs a reboot, okay. and then sends back the reply. Okay. So uh, it happened pretty quickly there, but uh, you know that was effectively how to issue the direct method through a job. Okay. And on the device side of thing, how much code do you have to code do you have to write there? It's it's quite little actually. So uh, if we look at some of the device code, you can see that uh, we've just registered for a callback method, and at the point where the command is received. Uh, it then responds by just writing out that it, it's rebooted. So it, it's actually quite straightforward. And that's because you're using the SDKs, right? So for the devices exactly. that we provide. Yeah, so we have a client-side SDK okay. that handles direct methods. It also handles twin updates, which I'll talk about So next. basically all the plumbing is taken care of. And, and you just like say, hey, I'm going to attach that callback for that method. Do whatever you have to do in there, which is your, you know, your world. Yes. And then you just like hand it back up to uh, the SDKs and IT Hub to do the response, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay, so that was the, the method. Uh, I think you had other things to show us, right? Yeah. So the other area was uh, um, twins and twin updates. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this example, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I've got a set of uh, thermostats, uh -huh. and I want to update them to be set to a certain temperature. Okay. Uh, so I want to target this to all of the thermostats that are in building 42, Okay. Um, and I want to set them to a more comfortable 72 degrees, just because it's been so cold outside that's, lately That's a good joke, because that's the building next door, <laughs> that's right. so that's going to yeah, actually no, be... I've been freezing <laughs> qu quite a bit lately. <laughs> yeah. We've been getting a lot of snow here. Uh, so uh, one thing to just show is um, before we get to that, though, uh, this builds on top of you know some of the primitives that I was mentioning, uh, and here uh, we can actually run. Uh, I mentioned a query to be able to okay. view how are the the devices currently set. Okay. So I just have my my query kind of pre-written because okay. you don't want to watch What kind of language is that? Um, so it's a SQL-like language that yep. um, is able to run queries against the managed backend okay. store for device twins. Uh, so I'll just copy and paste that into the into the query explorer that we hit have in the Azure IoT Hub workload okay. in the Azure portal. And when I do that, I can see a bunch of JSON that gets output. But yeah. this, these are essentially the device twins that are in my system. Okay. And so if I browse through that, I can see that uh, I was looking for all of the uh, devices in building 43 set to uh, temperature 70 because I want to update them. Uh -huh. uh, so if I just browse, I can see that some of the um, twins are showing that the desired property uh, and the reported property are set to 70. So okay. these devices have previously been told you need to be set to 70 degrees. Yeah. They've updated their temperature on the device, mm -hmm. and then they've reported that status back okay. to the cloud. Okay. So next, I'm going to run a uh, program that is going to uh, run a query to find those same devices in building 43 and update their uh, desired property okay. temperature to 72 degrees. Okay. So it happens that I've got that uh, teed up in the same program that I had written. Um, so on the right mm -hmm. here, I've got the cloud application. Okay. And this is going to run a job that will do what I just okay. mentioned. That's interesting. You're, you're, like, it makes me think that we do have an SDK on the cloud side of things, right, for various languages as well. So when you're developing your backend application, yeah. you know, you can actually interact with IT Hub through that, these SDKs to invoke the methods and start the jobs, define the jobs, and so forth. Right? Absolutely, yeah. So we, yeah, I've been leveraging both our client and service SDKs, That's and awesome. they've saved me a ton of time. <laughs> okay, so the uh, job is finished. 
And now I want to go back and just see that those uh, changes actually took effect. Okay. Uh, so first, I'll just run the same query that I had written. Um, okay. And uh, let me just close this up. So I'm just going to run the same uh, query that I wrote before to see now the results are empty because all of my twins have been updated. Okay. Uh, I'll just modify that query to instead say 72 degrees. Okay. So verify that. That it Verify worked. that it worked, and you can okay. see here all my twins have been updated. So awesome. I used uh, device twins, queries, and jobs to make a bulk change to my thermostats. Awesome. So and, and all of that actually in a few lines of code sends to the SDKs, and that's just the beginning for implementing your own device management in your own IoT solution. Absolutely. We have grand visions for what we can do in the product, and these primitives are major building blocks for that. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. It was crystal clear, and uh, we hope to hear more soon. Great. Thanks. Thank you.